Hey friends, tonight we're talking about Jesus. And the first things that I want to tell you about Jesus are a few things that most historians believe are true. And the first thing is that Jesus was a man who lived 2,000 years ago in first century Palestine. That he had a group of followers. That he was crucified under Pontius Pilate. And shortly after his death, a religious movement began. And those are just the facts that no historian will contest that all of those things are true, that nobody questions to being true at all. But the next thing we want to talk about tonight is what the Bible says about Jesus. What did Jesus have to say about who he was? And the first thing we need to know is that Jesus was 100% human. The Bible says in John 1.14, it says, So the Word became human and lived here on earth among us. You see, Jesus was 100% human. He lived among us. He went through everything you and I go through. He was angry. He was hungry. He got tired. He went to the bathroom. Uh, He had temptations. And then he suffered a very real and terrible, painful death. Jesus lived human life in every way possible. Every way except one. He never sinned. And that's what separates Jesus from us. We sin a ton. And Jesus never sinned. So you might be asking, why is it important to believe and to know that Jesus was human? And that's important to know because before Jesus came, God could only be partially known. We could know him through a sunset or through a waterfall. We could know him through, um, through looking at the world around us through his creation. But when Jesus came, God became man and we could see him and we can touch him and we can know him and we can hear him. We can know God more fully. And that's very important. Another reason that it's important that we know that Jesus was human is that because so that we can fully identify with everything that we're going through. Jesus knew what we go through. Jesus experienced everything that we go through. Uh, Hebrews 4.15 says, The high priest of ours, talking about Jesus, understands our weaknesses, for he faced all of the same temptations we do. Jesus understands our temptations. He knows our weaknesses. Yet there's one big yet. Yet Jesus never sinned. There's nothing that you've gone through that Jesus hasn't gone through that he, you can't identify with. And the other thing that's important to know and why it's important that Jesus had to be fully human is because it took a fully human p- person to pay the price for my sin and for your sin. The sacrifice that had to be made to pay the penalty for our sin had to be done by a human. And Jesus did that for us. Because Jesus was human, the payment could be paid for us. And he paid the full price for our sin, giving his life for us. He was the perfect representative for us. And the other thing you need to know about about who Jesus was is he was 100% God. John 1 says, in the beginning, the word already existed. He was with God and he was God. He created everything there is. Nothing exists that he didn't make. And so that's a reference to Jesus being God. He was the God man. He was 100% God. He wasn't a man who became God. He wasn't a God appearing to be a man. He was the real thing. He was one personality in two different natures. He was fully God and fully man. And that's what separates Jesus from all other religious leaders that have ever existed in this world. He claimed to be God. He was fully God and fully man. And then here's this thing. Because Jesus claimed to be God, you either believe who he said he was or he was a total nutcase. I mean, you've probably seen people out there that believe to be God and you're like, yeah, dude, you're crazy. Well, Jesus, either he was God or he was a total nutcase. But Jesus did prove that he was God while he was here on this earth. He performed miracles, tons, uh, dozens of miracles in front of the, the, his greatest skeptics, people that refused to believe that he was God. But in front of them, he would heal people. He would raise somebody from the dead. He would bring people to new life and he would set them free from the demons that were ca- holding them captive. And he did this in front of eyewitnesses. The man, the thief on the cross next to him said, this man has done nothing wrong. Pontius Pilate says, I found no guilt in this man. And those are people that were far from Jesus, didn't spend every day with him. John, who was one of his best friends, says Jesus called him Jesus Christ, Jesus the Messiah, Jesus the Savior, the righteous. Martha was another one that knew him very well. 
And, and she said, I've always believed that you are the Messiah, the Son of God. And then in Matthew 16, Jesus asked his disciples, who do people say that I am? Some, say, some said John the Baptist, some said Elijah, some said Jeremiah or one of the prophets. And then Jesus turned it to Peter and said, who do you say that I am? And that's where Peter answered, you are the Messiah, the Son of the living God. And Jesus replied, you're blessed because that's been revealed to you. And notice that Jesus didn't say, he didn't freak out and say, no, 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 don't say that about me. That's not true. He said, you're blessed because that's been revealed to you about me. So Jesus proved who he was through the miracles he did, through the eyewitnesses that were around him. And he also proved himself through the fulfillment of prophecies. And we talked about this a little bit last week, the 330 prophecies that had to come true in the person of one, in one person in order for that person to be the Messiah. And that person was Jesus Christ. And he couldn't just fake it. Things like being born of a virgin mother. You can't fake that. You know, like where you were born. Jesus, the Messiah was supposed to be born in Bethlehem. Jesus was born in Bethlehem. He couldn't, he couldn't arrange for that to happen. Um, and so on and on and on. All these things that could not come true totally in one person. Jesus fulfills through himself. And so it was, there was eyewitnesses, there were miracles, and there was prophecies that Jesus only fulfilled that nobody else could even come close to fulfilling. But then Jesus also came out and said specifically, I am the Messiah. There's no other religious leader that did what Jesus did in saying, I am God, I am salvation. And so he was either whacked out or he was telling the truth. And so the thing that breaks the whole deal wide open is this whole idea of resurrection. No other religious leader has said, I'm going to die, and three late days later, I'm going to resurrect from the dead. Jesus was 100% human and 100% God. And then some of you are going to be a little upset about me in just a moment, because, and that's okay, because I'm not scared about your anger. Um, but please listen for a little bit. Here's one thing that the, the, the Bible teaches about who Jesus said he was. Jesus said he was the only way to heaven, the only way. The only way that you're going to get to heaven is through Jesus. Jesus said, I am the way, the truth, and the life. No one can come to the Father but through me. And so some of you like this whole idea that all roads lead to God. You just got to be sincere about following the, your beliefs and doing what you believe to be true. But that's not the way it is with Jesus. Jesus says, I am the way, the truth, and the life. And here's the problem with just believing what you believe sincerely. Because when it comes to my own opinion, I can believe what I want all I want, but if I'm wrong, if I'm believing a lie, it doesn't matter how sincerely I believe that to be true. That's called pluralism. The whole idea that all roads lead to God is called pluralism. You take a bunch of different religions, you mix them together, and you think, okay, all roads lead to God. We take a little bit of what we like, and we try to make that true. And that makes us feel good. As long as we can believe what we want to believe, and that's true. But Jesus cleared it up and said, I am the way, the truth, and the life. And before you get all freaked out and say, man, isn't that a little exclusive? Isn't that a little narrow-minded? It might seem that way. But here's the thing. The words of Jesus weren't arrogant words. What Jesus said wasn't to, to prove himself to be true, to, to be something special. Um, he did it because he loves us. Jesus is available for everyone, regardless of color, regardless of what political party you go to, what your background is, what religion you grew up in. When it comes to heaven, everybody is invited to have a relationship with God. And you're saying, well, aren't all religions the same? No. Here's the difference. In Christianity, Jesus is the way. In every other religion in this world, you have to earn your way. You have to do everything you can to get there. You have to perform all the right tasks. You have to pray at a certain time. You have to do the right things. You know, you have to do the right sacrifices. And in Christianity, with Jesus, all we have to do is trust that Jesus is the way. That's the opposite. The, what, the, what the world says is different. We try to earn our way, but Jesus says, I'm just giving you this gift of heaven. You don't have to do anything to observe it. And so if Jesus is the only way to God, then what does that mean for how you live your life? And what does that mean for how you interact with your friends? Talk about that in small groups.